Okay, so I am back from the 2018 US Go Congress, and as always, it was a blast. I met a lot of new people uh, this year, more probably more than usual. I think there were, I just happened to see a lot of first time people. Maybe it was also just the fact that on everyone's badge who was attending the first Congress, they had a little yellow thing that said first time US Go Congress. So I think there's also, they were just more prominent. But a lot of you also came up and introduced yourself like day one, day two. Uh, so definitely, you know, I want to give some shout outs, you know, Jeff, if you're watching this, uh, Jeff, you know, came up to me on day one, he just freaked out, like, on the stairwell, and he's just, he's just, like, staring, he's like, ah, oh, it's Nick Sabicki, and I'm like, yeah, I'm a dude, <laughs> and uh, we had a little bit, and he, I think he had a blast at his first go Congress, uh, same thing with Doug and Chuck, you know, I tried to check in with you guys every day, uh, and I think you guys had a really good experience at your first Congresses as well. Um, so anyway, just, just, and I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I met so many people. Uh, thank you guys for coming up and intro introducing yourself. So many people came up and just thanked me and were like, you know, your videos meant so much. Like, here's my rank and I'm, I'm enti entirely owing my rank to you and your videos. So, uh, I just felt really good. The whole Congress, like people, people were just really grateful and, and showed me a lot of appreciation. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that I, you know, made them feel as welcome as I could and, uh, you know, they're now part of the community, right? If, if you come to the U.S. Go Congress, you're now kind of part of the club. Now, for all those of you who didn't go, you know, that's that's totally fine. The problem with the U.S. Go Congress is that it's expensive, and you got to travel, and you got to take off time from work. And, you know, the thing, uh, I, I, I just hope that all of you in your lives can, can pursue the things that you want to pursue. And, uh, you know, for me, that is go, right? Like, go, go, is, go is certainly worthwhile to, to you know, make, make your life or design my life in such a way such that I can I can go to the Go Congress and um, yeah it's it's just a very memorable fun week every year next week next year it's going to be in Madison Wisconsin which may not seem like the most exciting place but I'm told that the accommodations in terms of how the Go Congress will be set up uh, will be you know uh, just fantastic just very very close proximity very centralized uh, with a beer garden overlooking a lake next door to the to the playing room so hey uh, I'm already there. Um, anyway, uh, at the Go Congress, uh, there's a whole bunch of other news and things I'll uh, maybe I might um, talk about throughout the series of videos. Uh, I think I'm going to do at least one video for each of my U.S. Open games. I'm going to use Lizzie to do. I did get some human pro analysis on these games, but uh, we'll default to, to the Lizzie Leela GPU um, or Leela Zero GPU version here um, to do some analysis together. Uh, but the uh yeah we'll just we'll just go from that so we are we are fully bowing down before our robot robot overlords for these game reviews and we'll we'll see how it goes i'm a little bit frustrated with the lila zero lizzie interface right now because yesterday i spent quite a bit of computer time having it do like a really deep read through uh through some of my games but i can't find a way to store any of that data like after like like once it does the analysis um, even if you even if you leave the app open and start playing through variations and things, it seems to lose data, uh, and which is very frustrating if you just let your computer run for two hours, you know, analyzing a game. So uh, because of that, I don't really have a whole lot of stored data or variations. Um, we're just going to read through this in real time and let my GPU just sort of work through it. Um, if you got, if anyone out there is a better Lizzie or Lila Zero expert than I am and knows how to actually store data or save SGF files effectively with data, which I don't think is possible, um, but if it is, please let me know and I'll, I'll try to do that next time around. All right, so anyway, we'll let this run. Here we go. This is my game. Day one, I'm playing uh, Black against Soren. I think it's Jaffe. I'm not really sure if, if the J is harder or uh, soft. Uh, Soren is like a 20 year old guy who's already a really strong go player. Um, and you know, he showed up day one. I think he, you know, he's wearing these like kind of like, uh, thick square glasses and I think he has a hoodie on. Um, so he looks, he looks, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just kind of an interesting look for a day one opponent. You know, someone who's, who's like, you know, just really focused on the board and, and looks like he's going to bomb you or something. I'm not saying you're a terrorist or I'm saying like, you know, you had a, you had like a, a very intense energy that day, um, which is, you know, what you need for a go player. So anyway, uh, 
this is, let's play the first, let's get some stones on the board. Uh, and already you can start to see it counting off variations. I'm actually a little disappointed how slow this is going. Uh, I kind of want to open up my task manager and just see how much of my system it's using. Let's take a look. Oops, I don't know if that blue screen, you guys. Let's put that over here. And yeah, so this is running about 60% CPU and about, it's only really using about 30% of my GPU, I guess, because my video software is using uh, quite a bit of it as well. Okay. All right, we'll keep that in mind. Anyway, you can already see that the AI uh, really likes these three three points. Um, however, in this case, it's uh, this, it's really happy in closing the corner with this big enclosure. Enclosure, and I suspect different AIs will come up with different results, especially in the early early game. Um, I uh, don't play any of those. I play this move. And when I went to the US Go Congress this year, I had a strategy. I you know was looking at a lot of AI games and had sort of concluded to myself, and this is really one of my own conclusions, that, you know, the AI really doesn't care about five or even six space extensions. Like, this is a very traditional um, way to play Go. Like, like in, terms of, in terms of Go Theater, we see five space extensions being good because your opponent can't be comfortable inside of a five space extension. Um, whereas if you go one line further in a six space, he can. But because of how the AI plays with all these attachments, it really doesn't care about five space ex extensions. It's it's it invades them quite happily, in fact, or at least so it would seem in my own analysis. And so one of the things uh, that I came to the Go Congress just having in the back of my mind was I was going to play a lot of four space extensions just in the Fuseki, and uh, certainly I did that here by playing uh, this micro Chinese. And yes, it has a five space extension on this side. Um, but the main the main focal point, right? This corner enclosure is a four space extension. Now, I think my reasoning is flawed. I, I I have since abandoned my four space extension theory. Just just you know, again, I was playing it not really just to just imitate the AI, I guess, but more to throw my opponents off, right? With with just very different spacing that they're used to seeing. Um, but even so, you can still see that this extension still has uh, the weak point with this attachment. Uh, where white can come in here and uh, either make a base, get out, or attach here to make some sort of sabaki shape. Um, this is still totally, totally fine for white. This isn't this isn't um, that difficult to deal with. Uh, Lila already wants to come down here and approach this corner, um, but we can just show you what might ha the things that might happen um, if white were to attach here. Uh, something like this looks pretty pretty benign, and then attach again. And so, I know, man, these variations get so long. <laughs> uh, take free stuff, and then come back. Mm. All right, so that's a giant trade. <laughs> uh, with this attachment, I mean, you could you could see a couple of different ways from that cross cut could go, um, but in this case, white chose to, you know, basically sacrifice the corner to end up just thrashing the middle and owning the top left. So, I mean, that's, that's just one of many possibilities. Uh, but I think you can see that still white has possibilities. It's not, it's not super uncomfortable. You're not coming right under attack. White stones are kind of flexible um, because of this 4-3 attachment. Or sorry, 4-4 four, four attachment to the 4-3. Okay, let's go back to the game because my opponent did not do that. Uh, my opponent did indeed come here, which I think is, yep, the Leela move, right? Uh, and here I played this move, which I really don't think is a robot move. Um, but the robot likes it, and I and I, I reasons that um, I really didn't want to pincer yet. Um, if I was going to pincer, I'd probably play this one. Um, I wanted to play a little bit faster than Kosumi, uh, and the next I think it's the next move where the robot and I kind of disagree, or, or maybe have different reasons. Um, the robot really wants really wants Soren to play here and make a small base, which is kind of surprising to me. Um, I would expect it to at least play one line further, and again, it's not a huge percentage difference, but uh, my opponent does neither, and he plays a much more human move, a much more modern, um, just just trendy kind of move, right, which is this one. The really just trying to be very light and flexible uh, kind of invasion shape, where you're inviting an invasion by your opponent, and uh, white will either take the outside or or just, again, have a very flexible approach to dealing with it. Um, now, that being said, if you actually look, even though this move wasn't on the robot's radar, if you look over here, uh, it says the last move actually 
it it's sort of seeing that the last move is better than its idea. That's what this little percentage means. So robot likes it, even though it wasn't on, it, even though it didn't appear in its initial analysis. Uh, a couple other things about the interface I'll point out right now. If you guys look at the graph, you can kind of see that white is uh, winning. Uh, 55 to 44. Now, that's really not saying much. Again, the AI likes the, the Comey much better than the first move. So it always starts with white in the lead. Uh, and, you know, right now it's just moving down a percentage point. So I think um, that's that's very normal. Um, it, you'll, you'll see it fluctuate uh, quite quite a bit. Oh, yeah, let's 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 take a sip here and then and then we'll talk about something very important. Mm. So before I left for the Go Congress, I made a whole bunch of videos just with robots. And I primarily used 5Q games uh, as my starting point for analysis. And the reason why I did this is I assumed, perhaps incorrectly, that 5Q games is probably at about the level where the moves make, st make sense, right? They're very human. Like, I think, I think they, those moves can be understood by the vast majority of my viewers to this channel. And <clears throat> the moves that the players play are wrong enough for it to be really entertaining and really just ridiculous. Uh, where where I expected and 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 I think the got the you know was delivered, uh, you know the ro the graph of these robots is wildly alternating back and forth, uh, from move to move or, or area to area, um, where one player would take a huge lead and another player would blunder and then the other player would blunder back and uh, we would just see crazy things happen in those games and you know what we did, but here was the wrong part, I'm pl I was playing at the Fordon level in the Fordon band, at the U.S. Go Congress. And throwing this game into Lizzie shows me that the, all the exact same shit happens in my game, right? It's, it's, it's not even like, like, we're going to see this rating bar before the game is end uh, do some pretty extreme swings. And so I promise you that, all right? This, is, this game is just as crazy as the 5Q game. So, okay. Uh, robot, robot's still running here. Um, robot really wants to play high. That's interesting, and, ju and just put pressure on this high. Um, hmm. Okay, I was thinking. Well, in the game, I end up playing down here because uh, right now I've <coughs> emphasized the bottom with this move. Um, I this. I mean, this feels like the very human move. It doesn't feel like I need to play another move yet. I can still invade here later. Um, maybe this isn't quite as urgent as uh, I think it is. Actually, yeah, if black plays here, white just dives in. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, something like this. Some sort of uh, quasi-fighting sequence immediately erupts. That's all right. I could, I could get behind that. I think that's one. I think that's fine. Um, but I, again, I emphasize the bottom. So I'm going to continue in that direction. I think it's okay. Robot only said it's a minus 0.3% hit. Okay, we'll take it. All right, uh, this is interesting. This is not what my opponent does. At this point, the robot says pincer. Uh, again, I'm, I've, I've emphasized the bottom now uh, twice. And so right now is a good time to come here and just basically divide it up. Uh, I think this is this is not, uh, this is a good idea. This is This is certainly playable. Um, certainly one of the prime candidates, um, but I think my opponent was just trying to be much more patient. Uh, and I th and in a game like this where, you know, you have, or you already have things you need to invade, right? Namely this black structure at top. Uh, if, if I were playing, and this, I'm, I'm putting myself in my opponent's shoes and Soren's shoes, if I was to keep playing over here, I would just feel like I'd be constantly invading everything and just very, very busy. So I think, again, this is a very human reaction. Um... Because, you know, he already has to keep in mind the weakness in these two stones, and we have these invasion points up here. So, Robot didn't like it, but I totally understand how it's, how it's uh, human and, and totally just fine move. Um, now, here's, here's the real kicker, though. The Robot doesn't like this because it thinks Black will play here. Like, if you notice, all these other moves basically ha keep, had the game at the same percentage it just was. So... This, this move is better than it looks if black isn't going to play here, at least according to the robot. And I'm not going to play here, right? I'm, I'm not very comfortable playing this. We can play out this variation for a little while. Uh, but I don't, uh, I don't... I don't feel great as black. 
Um, here, let's let's take a look. Oh, honey? Is it really honey? I feel like we need to extend, but robot says honey. That seems very dangerous. <laughs> very dangerous. Uh huh. And then we just run out. How does this go? All right, these variations are so robot. Oh, wants to play here first. Still thinks that's good too, though. Yeah, this is a pretty crazy variation. Oh man. Oh man. So, if black peeps, this is what the robot thinks will happen. Uh, black will end up getting a small, most, uh, almost live group, not quite live, I guess. Uh, so we have to live there. Um, white will, black will also get a group over here that white will attack. Um, black will be left with a floating group in the middle. White will have a semi-floating group here on the side. I have no way of knowing this is good. Like, there's, this is just... I feel like I'm fighting in white's neighborhood. And I have more to lose than white does. That's my, that's my, uh, <laughs> amateur take on it. If you can actually see here, if I just play all those moves, the robot doesn't even really like it for black, right? You can sort of see that graph go down. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know about this one. Uh, I mean, I saw this in a pro game not too long ago, and I actually did a video about it uh, on my channel. And I thought it was really cool, but also a move I also sort of recognized as a move that I am not strong enough to really play to know when this is good. Because uh, I think if I start just accepting this is this is the move I should play in this position, there'll be so many positions where that doesn't apply, and I don't understand the difference. So, yeah. I'm just going to play the normal human move, which, again, I think is a fine move. And actually, if I play it, uh, Robot really doesn't like it. Robot's like, no, you screwed up. 2%. Well, screw you, Robot. I have a nice formation on the bottom. Like, this stone actually works very well with these two. It helps this stone as well, makes this white invasion much more difficult later on. Uh, I think this is a fine move. All right, but it's saying white should immediately play this and break this up. And that doesn't feel bad at all. I think that's, like, again, black is very thin here, 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 and here, right? There's no less than four possible invasion points. White really only has one to worry about. Um, so, yeah, but my opponent, oops, doo -doo 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 -doo. I should use, I should get better at using mouse wheels, uh, kicks here. And this, uh, I think is also an interesting idea. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I might, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad. If I was white, I'd be really tempted to maybe add one more stone over here and just claim the right. And if black takes the corner, then throw in a stone here and invade directly. Uh, but this is a very similar idea, just without without exchanging anything. Uh, I kick, and after I kick, of course, even though the robot doesn't... Um, well, actually, I guess robot now says this, play play this. Okay, so robot robot is actually playing a very human move. Um, Though Soren plays a little bit uh, safer, higher and further away. Uh, and the reason why you... If you're going to pincer here, uh, and you want to kick first, is because you need to make this heavy to attack. Otherwise, black will just run in the corner um, and just leave you with sort of a floating stone that's very hard to profit with. All right, so I like, if you're going to play this kick, this is, I think this pincer is, at least intuitively, this pincer seems better to me. Well, the robot really wants to play more severely, um, which is interesting because this point, both my opponent and I felt like this was a key point in the upcoming fight. And I take, I take a really major loss of tempo to play this point, um, which, and the, so, you know, Soren and I, we went through the game afterward and he thought it was a good move, but um, I don't get a good result. So we'll let that speak for itself. All right, so white is coming in the attack. White is looking for, you know, just to start breaking stuff up. All of the white groups are solid enough. Uh, what's interesting here is it wants me to do a two-space jump out, just attack this on a large scale. And yeah, I think that that's a good idea. Um, in the game, I also kind of played this move. Um, I looked at this one briefly, but if I was going to play this one, I kind of agree this one uh, does more, more or less the same things and just is faster. Has a nicer follow-up as well with this shoulder hit. Um, yeah, so I play, I, I go, I play a little bit of a, of a handicap kind of Joseki that I kind of botch. <laughs> so I play this one. And if you guys have seen this before, this happens a lot in handicap games. Here, is there a way for me to, uh, what's the key to make all the colored moves go away? Let's see, we can hold the X key down, toggle variation, toggle win right, toggle, 
None of those are the key. <laughs> it just has tall coordinates? No. Show high move number? No. All right, I don't know. Oh, actually, I do want to show move number, don't I? No, I don't. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm still learning Lizzie, the Lizzie interface, as you can see. And I've already expressed some frustrations with it. Um, what black is really hoping for, right, is to get white to connect here and can play something like this. Uh, white plays here, then black can either take the corner. Um, if white, whoops, uh, uh, it's, you know, just as normal for white to play here and for them to exchange this. And basically black gets a little bit stronger in Sente. And that's all I'm really looking for. Just a, just a few extra liberties, um, poten more potential for, for eye space in Sente. Uh, my opponent has no intention of giving me any of that. And so if we put these back on, we can see uh, that the robot thinks that this is the strongest move, which is wild. This is not one of the normal variations that I've ever seen <clears throat> arise from this position, um, making this empty triangle in response to the 3-3 three, three point. That's, that's pretty crazy. Here's how the robot thinks it will play out, something like this. Uh, and then basically black uses this stone and this stone to get this move and this move kind of for free, like in tempo. Um, so black can then finish playing over here. Now the downside is white gets to play here, so there really isn't any black points. Uh, but the point is that this stone is still under attack, and black is moving out to the center, and this stone does help develop this side, so... You know, we're giving... And, and actually, this stone still has Aji, right? This stone um, still has Aji in the corner. So it's not super clean. But man, that's just not a variation I've seen. Uh, my opponent plays a variation that I more or less expected. Um, and I play... So the, basically, the idea is Black's going to sacrifice this corner group um, to get a bunch of free stuff on the outside. That's, that's the idea. That's why you play this sequence. And in handicap games, when you play this way, what tends to happen is Black will get a bunch of free stuff on the outside... And if the opponent is, is, if there's a big difference in rank, often this stone will end up living on the inside anyway, right? The handicapped player, or the, uh, the, uh, the stone-giving player, the stronger player, will find a way to end up making this live in the end. Um, by the way, this variation, you need the ladder to play it, and that's also why I, I chose this way, is because I have this, this ladder breaker right here, breaking this ladder, which is why white can't capture this, this uh, pushing in stone. Um, these, this is a very human sequence. Like Again, like I said, this comes out of handicap variations. I don't think the robot respects it very well. Okay, anyway, after this connection, I have this kind of annoying group in the corner. It's, it's not alive, but it's not... Again, it's annoying because these two white groups are cut. And I should just play here, right? And even if white plays here, this move isn't sente against these two stones. I have the ladder in both directions. So that would give uh, Black more time to play a few other moves. Um, perhaps get some more free stuff. There's more free stuff. And uh, at some point, white will have to come back and take. And you can see black's position on the outside it really is not bad at all. right? We got this free Atari in. Um, we got to descend. And that was all basically incentive for giving up these stones. That's the type of thing I'm looking for. But during the game, uh, let's see, let's go forward. I, yeah, I play this point. And... Part part of the problem over here is that with this with this move, I really didn't want white. Whoops. Uh, here, let's give black a move. Um, this Hane is really big. Uh, you can actually already see how much it just hurts my win percentage if if some exchange happens and white gets this Hane. Granted, this wasn't the best move to exchange for it. Um, uh, black's black shape is a little bit traumatized, right? White, white might not ever have to play up more free moves here um, because this group has enough liberties and eye shape to just eat the corner anyway. And so white can focus on this side and black won't get very much. But uh, by taking this move right away, even though I sort of pre like, like ha half prevented this, this Hane um, and, and threatened to link up my, my stone to my other uh, top stone, uh, the stone isn't really Sente. Right, I'm. I'm just saying. Hey, can I take? I'm. A, I'm effectively saying. Hey, can I take some third line territory? And so my opponent's like, "Yep, you sure can. Here, let me let me fix my problems in the corner. You can, you can go on and take your third line territory." So this this was a very poor move uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, the robot says it's only a three percent loss, but you'll see how I don't get enough free stuff over here uh, by taking the time out to do this right now. My opponent Atari's, which is fine. Uh, again, I can. 
Oh yeah, he plays a very interesting move here. Instead of instead of continuing this in any way, any meaningful way, he just connects. Which this this was not a move I really saw. Um, uh, this feels like really terrible shape for white, right? Go players do not want to make you know blocks of four stones uh, unnecessarily. Um, like like what is like like yeah, what's the point? Like this stone in particular looks really bad uh, in this case, right? Just what did what did why did you play this stone? And so I uh, think I'm going to get some more free stuff by playing this Hane. White plays this nice move. <clears throat> and I think this is okay. I think if black plays here, uh, at least the robot says, this is this is good enough, right? White kind of has to come back and, uh, you know, finish this off. I can play another move on this side. Um, these three stones, if white, if white goes down, I come out and attack. If white comes around, I just go under and connect. I don't really need to play another move over here. I can just focus on the left. This, these two stones in the corner really aren't worth much now because black can just 3-3 three, three and, and white gets no points. Um, so white's only profit this game is this one corner. And granted, black doesn't have a lot of profit yet. Uh, there's not really, you, you know, there's, there's, <laughs> black, we'll say black right now has, has the bigger potential at the bottom or even the top right. So, uh, the robot's like, yeah, this is, this is good for black. Look, the game has been swung. And if this happens, <clears throat> this is a good corner sacrifice, right? I got enough from it. Even after playing this move that was a little bit slower, at least mistimed. But I don't do that, <laughs> right? Instead of instead of just instead of just taking, oops, that's not the move. Uh, oh no, that is the move. Sorry. Instead of just taking profit, I try to ask for a little bit more, right? And I play this move, which doesn't really. I mean, it gets me an extra liberty on the inside, um, but it also gives White the first move out here, and that sucks. Right? Because before, I'm, I'm kind of connecting, and white has to react, and then I have another move to play. Well, now white played here, and now I'm connecting, and now white has another move to play. And look look at this robot disapproval. Robot is like, you screwed up. Like, whatever you did, gaining an extra liberty here, not that big of a deal. The white group already has five liberties. Uh, this white group will actually crawl here to get more liberties. And so the extra liberty isn't worth that much. And so... For the next, I don't know, let's see, uh, 30 moves or so, I live sort of in this doldrums of, of the Go board, where I am just kind of reacting. And here, again, I'm still trying to use this extra liberty somehow, right? I, I, I paid for this extra liberty that I really could shouldn't have afforded, <laughs> right? Again, the white group has five. Uh, so I play here, just trying to link up all my stones into some sort of cohesive mass. And again, by itself, not a bad move. Um... But the problem is it's already redundant, right? I showed you in that previous variation how black, because black played this move, black already had two ways to go on the top. Black could jump out or black could connect up. And that means I just had to focus on the left. When I play this move, now all of a sudden, right? I, it's, it's like I, I've used one of my resources. Like, like I don't need to go this way now. And so I've just devalued the value of this move. Um, if I if I'm going to rescue this now, grant, yes, the stone is still useful in getting is in making this type of jump, uh, right? Because the shape is good, but the the point of this stone is how flexible it is, right? It can I can go this way or this way, and if I don't use that flexibility, then that's really inefficient, and that's what you're seeing on the board, and that I don't know that's kind of confusing, but that's that's it's uh um it's like eating your own I don't have a good analogy, but it's like it's like look I played a move. They gave me 50 points over here and 50 points over here. And uh, I already have, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to assign, like, arbitrary numbers, right? So I already have, like, two things that add up to 100. And if my opponent takes one, I'll take the other one. And, um, but if I, if I just take one by itself, it's like, now these 50 points are useless, right? I've, just, I've actually just shorted myself 50 points. That was a terrible analogy. But maybe it made sense to someone. Okay, white takes this Atari, because white white sort of smells blood here, right? Black has played two moves sort of on the wrong side. And I connect, white just gains liberties, I play here, and white plays this move, which was not on my radar. I was expecting white to maybe play something like this or this. Um, I did not expect white to play this in the game. It's not it's not that great of a move. Um, it's it's it was just surprising. Like it's one of those moves that caught me off guard. Uh, robot says play here, which is really interesting, and I'm pretty sure. So I, so I, I told you guys before I ran this game through like a, 
you know, 30,000 variations of move um, for the whole game. I think it ended up concluding that this was better, but right now it's gone the other way, so I don't know how long I have to let this run. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember Lizzie looking at this move and going, this is the correct one over this one. So that's pretty surprising. Let's play, this is not, I play this one. Um, let's look at this, because... Oh, okay, maybe, maybe, it did, maybe, maybe I, did, I, did, I do remember reading this variation. Oh, man. Such, yeah, very tough playing. Very tough playing. Yeah, so black, black is more or less just saying, hey, don't worry about these three stones, the new fight's in the middle. Let's go back and, and fix this over here. Uh, and that, this really seemed too crazy to me. <laughs> but that's where robots are really useful. All right, if we play this way, this is a game, right? I can attack these three stones. White wants to play move over here to finish this off. Oh man. Uh, I certainly play the more natural move in the game. Um, and my opponent does not do the, the pullback here, which I think would have been fine. He asks for a little bit more. Uh, and this is all more or less forced. Um, and my opponent you know, senses there's actually a shape liberty problem over here, so he takes this double Hane. Again, very human human intuition kind of thing. Uh, and, the, and the Hane works because I can't... I don't, again, white actually has three liberties down here, so I can't play this Atari and then, and then short the liberties in this white group. It's it's three. It's basically three to three. So, um, although actually maybe... Yeah, actually, Lila, Lila likes... This is this is the game. Lila says this is, this is play, everything else is in order to play. I mean, not even the pattern overplay, but this is just the simple, assured way. Oh, look at this. Leela has already changed her mind. She actually doesn't like taking this now. Let's explore this. We play this, and then this. Uh, yep, yeah, Leela can take some free stuff. Oh my god, look at this board. It's just contemplating every move. I don't know what's going on. It also really has is hating black. Oh man, this is this is bad. Look at all these terrible exchanges. Yep, and at some point, at some point, white has to come back and take this if we play this way. Um, but white, white got a lot of strength out here. Uh, this doesn't look great for black. Right, black is still under attack. Removing one of the liberties now helps this group as well. So I get fewer force. If I if I use the forcing moves against this clump, I don't get as many against this clump. That's the danger of making these sort of group sacrifices. All right, we're not we're not in love with that. We're not really in love with what I did either, but um, we're not in love with that. <laughs> so it takes this, yeah, and this is this is my move. I just take the shape point. Uh, black black has a shape problem here. These three stones only have three liberties, and these two stones are really annoying. So I just play the most solid move I possibly can, which Lita's like fine. <laughs> Uh, Lila says to connect here and leave this cut, which is a little dangerous, but really isn't an issue, right? Oh, it says go that way, huh? Huh. All right, did not expect that. That's that's a nice move. Yeah, I wouldn't. I w didn't see this move. That's cool. Yeah, I did not see that move. Okay. Uh, in the game, however, my opponent. Uh, it still it's, looks at this cut Aji and really doesn't want there to be Aji, right? He just wants to kill these stones cleanly. So he plays here. And uh, Leela is sort of debating, looks like, between these three moves. Um, this this eye poking shape I get to play later. You can really play it any time. Uh, I have plenty of time to play this. So Leela will keep, you'll see Leela keep looking at this move for quite a while. Um, but I'm looking at this game and going... Uh, I screwed up, right? These are dead. This is my sacrifice. This was sort of a, you know, intentional sacrifice to get free stuff on the outside. The free stuff I got was non-existent, right? I got a, basically another dead group of, of five stones and something like a wall that's not a very good wall. Uh, I mean, I captured one stone. So this game is going kind of shitty. But at least, you know, the top is developable. So, you know, maybe I can develop something there. And these five stones are not dead yet, so, you know, the game isn't over, but we're, we're in a bad spot. Now, the robot says, hey, play here, make this live, let's just start solving your problems one by one. But this, living here is almost undoubtedly going to be some sort of gote. And if White wants to finish this off, 
it's really hard for white to do it cleanly with one move that's efficient. And it's and it'll be super gote, whatever it is, right? If white plays on their move over here, black's just gonna get two moves somewhere else on the board. And so it's very it's very inhuman, I think, to keep playing this right now, right? You want to especially if you're behind. It, it's it's sorta of like, you know, if you have if if there's like one really big area of the board that's the biggest move but it doesn't have that much of an effect on the rest of the strategy of the game. Uh, it's re it feels so bad to play that as a human, right? It's like, I'm just, this is my, like, when you play a move like that, you're basically saying to your opponent, like, I win. This is my I win move. And I don't think white's going to play that yet, right? White's not, it's, it's, that's, that's such a, it's too early in the game to feel like you can play an I win move. Like, I'm, I've killed your stones. There's not enough points for you. I win the game. And so I play here, right? This is, this is again, very, a very human exchange, right? Where I'm saying, okay, look, you may have killed this off, but I'm going to be just as optimistic about my top right, even though there's holes in this attachment and Aji here. Opponent uh, responds, and uh, again, black could still play over here, but it's the same mentality. Look, this is not, like, if, if white wants to waste time doing this over here, I'm going to let him do that, and I'm just going to try to make this a game in another way. I don't want to go into a situation where I'm at a disadvantage immediately, just to to resurrect some stones. So at this point I take the next, uh, it's not even on the radar, uh, it's 20, 18, 20, 22. Oh man, I really don't, I'm not sure I want to make this exchange, right? Because if I make this, if I push once more, then these five stones get way more difficult to resurrect later. All right, so this move aside, I take the, seems what Leela thinks is the biggest move just on the board. And again, I'm, I'm just saying, look, I have a lot of stuff up here. Like a lot. You're going to have to come in there and we're going to have to fight. And maybe during that fighting, I'll get stronger and then I'll be able to attack these two stones. And then while I'm attacking these two stones, maybe the bottom ones become natural territory. And if all that happens, you know, and you still have to, you know, connect or live in Gote, maybe then I'll come back and make this live and win the game. And that's, that's, you know, I'm just being really optimistic, right? I'm just saying, look, you may have killed this, but I'm going to be working on something bigger and I'm going to force you to come in and deal with it. And of course, my opponent does. Again, my opponent's strong player. Uh, he goes on to actually place in in the band. I think he comes in third, uh, third place. So again, he has he has a nice tournament. Um, so he's you know certainly solid, certainly strong. Uh, and here, this this was an interesting choice. That the robot says this is the best response. Uh, my thinking was th this is the more important connection. Um, I really don't want to just take a bunch of territory here and give white a wall and let white attack this stone. Um, the other thing about this move is locally, this is kind of one of the best responses against this attachment. Um, just because white has the hardest time making, uh, live shape. You can even see to the point where, uh, the computer is like, okay, let's come back and play here. <laughs> Although this looks like the best move in the area. Um, interesting. Wants black to play here. Here, let's not play there. Um, you can kind of, anyway, um, uh, what I would just really want to show you is how difficult it is for white to actually find eyes after you play this extension. Uh, just keep everything solid. And if, if you're worried about this move, there is a cut right here that um, you can either take the outside or, or take the whole corner with. So I like this move a lot against this attachment. And in this position, it really doesn't feel wrong. The robot, uh, robot says here, but, oh man, strategically, this feels good for white. Look, we're, white is slowly solving his problem on the right-hand side of the board. And these three stones are very useful in doing that. Um, although the robot says, no, black can still fight here. So that's okay. Um, you know, black got a lot of profit, right? All this is now basically profit. Um, and black has to fight to win. So, I don't know, I just, I just want to keep white weaker and floating. I did not want white to attack me. I wanted to have all the momentum, so I played here. Uh, white found a really interesting move, and it's not even on Leela's radar. Um, I thought it was a real, I thought, it, I thought it was a really great move. I think, let's see what Leela thinks. Uh, Leela thinks, eh, not want great, but okay. Um, again, white doesn't re really need to disrupt all these points in order to win the game as long as white kills this. So, I, you know, I think, I think this is a, a very light way to sort of make trouble and get your stones out, make sabaki. Um, it starts to make use of this Aji a little bit, and this Aji, right? There's a, a peep and a cut here.
both of which work for white and white can use. Uh, it, it gives us a friend to this cornerstone, so when white descends or it comes into 3-3, three, three, there's a little more flexibility. I, again, I really like this move. Uh, I'm not sure why the computer is so so not in favor of it. I go, well, I guess the computer really just wants to come back and play the move here to kill these off. Uh, but okay, I play, I play, I just try to keep the, the group split and keep my stone strong. It says white should cross cut here. That's a little, that is a little bit scary, but I did read this out in the game and uh, I didn't play this move. Um, in the game, I, in my reading, I played here, of course. Um, but in the game, or in, sorry, in the robots world, this is the strongest way to play. And this move helps solve the Aji problems, and these white stones are actually not alive yet. And so white probably should play here again, although the robot's like, no, you should just kill this. <laughs> uh, and this is, a, this, this, can, this is still kind of open, so I don't feel like it's profit for black, but if it does get enclosed, that's a lot of points. Um, and maybe it's not that difficult to enclose, because maybe jumping here puts a lot of pressure on these two stones. So if we go something like this, and this, and if white has to make some sort of shape, uh, that's that's pretty nice looking. That's that's a lot of points, right? That's a lot of that's a lot of meatballs. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So forty something points. And again, yeah, white would need another move up here. Um, that's uh, I'm I'm just counting points. That was I wouldn't say specifically do this right now. I'd say you'd probably play over here first and then build naturally. Uh, either way, my opponent doesn't. Uh, want to do that variation. My opponent is very much more interested in um, just keeping more sabaki shape, right? And so playing a cross cut. If you play a cross cut, yeah, that's a good sabaki technique, uh, especially to get if you need some free stuff. But you are risking more. And he seems to think this is fine. Just take the outside. Uh, robot says to connect here, says this connection's big. My opponent does not do it, and instead he plays this move. Which, after he played it, I really liked it. Like, I, I was like, oh yeah, maybe, you know, this Atari wasn't big enough. Even though it, even though it makes, you know, it's, it's a lot of points. Um, this seems to unite White's stones a little bit more, solve his problems. Yeah, but Robot says this connection's fine, and once you're connected here, then there's more trouble we can have. And black can't enclose this whole group with one move, right? Like, like this this group can't uh, already. White would do a bunch of forcing moves and then maybe get out. Like, like this area is too open, <laughs> so white can afford to connect. And if white gets strong here, right, there is a cut here to get more Aji, so uh, get more free stuff. But during the game, I kind of, I kind of, I don't, I don't say like lost my cool or anything, but definitely felt pain from this move, right? Because white was slowly solving all of his problems and all white needed to do was just come back and kill us off and white would have enough points to win if all these stones live. So, again, maybe because I was losing my cool or just because I didn't know what else to do, uh, I dive in. I, need to I feel like I need to make something happen now. And again, I don't want to come back and do this yet because uh, I want to keep momentum... I, 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 need, I need momentum, right? Look, look at the win percentage, it's 25%. Just saving these... Yeah, is the slow and steady play in the biggest area of the board, but that's not enough to win the game, right? If Even if I save them, if white gets to play another move over here, make some points over here, and make everything solid, um, I, it's still not clear that I have enough points to win. So, uh, you know, I need, I need a little bit more. And so I ask here. Uh, white play, again, white plays another really nice move. I was really impressed with white's moves. I thought all these were really nice little subtle um, solutions. Even though the robot didn't agree, uh, white makes this exchange first. Again, um, this is a nice exchange to make because later on, uh, white can play here or white can play here, depending on what, which so sort of shape white needs. And in certain cases, white can play here, uh, especially if there's a weakness that gets exposed on this side. So just getting this exchange is really nice. Um, later on, right, depending on, on how this goes, Black might not want to play here in response. Black might want to play here. And this is particularly true. Uh, let's see. Even though white looks like white lives in the corner, if black needs to jump out and attack this and just keep them separated, uh, you know, black might be more inclined to do this way. Just to, you know, keep his group strong so that this group can come under attack more directly. Uh, when we play this move, it's not so clear 
um, and in fact in the game, white immediately plays here, um, that white is willing to just live in the corner, right? White, white doesn't want to become separated. White's connection is his biggest priority. So here, here's a big mistake for me. Uh, Robot says it's a, it's a minor mistake, but I think, I think in the spirit of things it's a pretty big mistake. Because in the game, I play here. I just, I just crawl. And I didn't wedge uh, because I thought this was too easy on white. If I extend, white just connects, and something like this, and if white plays again, it's, it's co, white wouldn't have to play again even, white could just co. Um, so maybe that connection is, is premature. Um, but what I, this is what I saw. I saw just white sort of connecting all the stones underneath and getting some area for eye shape. And I thought this was bad for me, um, especially given the fact that there's now an invasion point here. But the thing is, this uh, sort of wall panuki is really useful um, for building this. Uh, you can even see, you know, how it can be used directly, right, with even just adding one more stone here. This whole bottom actually grows very quickly now. It's very difficult for white to break this up and invade after this exchange. So even though it feels like white got what white wanted, if I, if I do this, this wedge, it's really not good for white. And that's, that's one of the hard things about Go, right? It's like, it's like my opponent just keeps asking to link up. Right? It's like, hey, can I just link up all my stones? And, you know, like, as a human, right? You're like, no, you can't link up your stones. You're, that's not your right, <laughs> right? Like, let's keep every, let's keep cuts, let's preserve cuts and keep things separated. Um, and so, you know, when I'm reading out this exchange and going, well, white just weak, links up his stones anyway, it might even do it in Sente if he's willing to fight a cow for it. Um, I was like, well, I'm not willing to do that, so let's just crawl and I'll preserve cutting points for later. Oops. Um, but, you know, even though I have this sort of cut here and definitely have this cut here, um, it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's so, it's too submissive. This is not en worth enough points to justify this wall. And this will come back to haunt me. Uh, you'll, 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 we, we, I know, I know I promised you guys a crazy game, and so far the only thing that's happened is we more or less played even to a point where I screwed up real bad <laughs> once, and then we just sort of played even again. Uh, there's more coming. Don't worry. Okay? It's happening. So, again, the robot was, you know, very just like, okay, you guys are more or less playing even through here. This is an even sequence, given the board state. You know, no one's swinging the game. Um, sorry. Oh, yeah. And then Black took this move, which was really, which, which again, was sort of like, like, it's a little bit of like an I-win move. However, this, this would be like the real I-win move, right? This kind of does the same thing. It takes points, and it more or less kills off this group. You know, for Black to run this out is just so much more hard, difficult. Um, like, I'm not even sure how... Actually, it looks like Black gets out in this variation. Uh, maybe not. It's, it's just so... It's, it's, anyway, you can sort of see Black is getting clamped and eaten and is really difficult, you know, to get Black out after this move. But he plays this one with kind of the same idea. Um, I think he's thinking, if, if White's going to go here, Black's just going to play here immediately. And, you know, now the bottom's a little bit stronger. White doesn't, White, White sort of got reduced, but this is, this is not bad for White, right? Like, this is still just great. I don't know. I think he just saw, he saw this as sort of Mii, right? Where, like, if Black was going to play over here, White would play over here and vice versa. Except this is way is so much better for White. Uh, because not only do you still make points over here, this stone is, like, the stone you need to really punish these five. So, this move is a mistake, and pretty significant. Robot's like, hey, hey, like, look, it's, it's the highest move we've been in a while. Like, you're, you just gave me some reason to be optimistic. Oh my god, I just spilled. Ah, I might, didn't even realize it was there. Ah. Oh, let's, let's paper towel this. Oh. Let's drink some, actually, I should drink some. Oh. Mm -hmm. We'll leave that paper towel there in case I have another accident. <laughs> uh, of course, the robot's favorite move at this point is actually back over here. Which, this shape is crazy, right? Look, double elephant eye to in between these two groups. Um, but of course, the real meaning of this move is to attack these four. It's not to 
make territory or connect these things, but still. This was a move that was just not on my radar. And it's pretty it's pretty amazing actually. Like this move. Um like I don't like let's see what robot thinks will happen. Wow, robot alright, robot throws the game into chaos if black plays here. Alright, that's that's too much to compute. That's not very human. Uh yeah. <laughs> so my white plays here. And I play this attachment. And so the robot says this is this is if I'm gonna play over here, this this or this look like the best ones. Um, and I kind of, and actually at the point of the game, when I, after I played this, I went to the bathroom and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> pissing at the urinal and I'm going, shit, I really shouldn't have attached. I really should have just played this move. This was, this was a better shape in this position. Um, you know, I, yeah, um, I thought, I thought it would be better just to have a stone here. Um, but in the end, I don't think it mattered. Like I thought, like I came back to the board and I was like, ah, I didn't get. To, I was feeling bad because I didn't get to play the move that I felt like I should have played. Um, oh, by the way, these games are uh, an hour and a half of time per side, five minute. Uh, sorry, five by thirty bioyomi. So we have a lot of time. Although uh, in this game, I do run into a little bit of a. I, I do run out of my clock fa much faster than my opponent does. Um, well, we'll see that coming up. I think. So anyway, I kind of regretted playing this. When I got back to the board, I was like, ah, I feel kind of ugly and sick and not playing the move I wanted to play. But I don't think it really matters. They, they do very similar things. Um, and this one perhaps even is more... Oh man, I almost spilled it again. Uh, this one is perhaps even more forceful, right? Or at least, at least feels active. Like, this is the one that makes my opponent's job tougher. Uh, at least in terms of the reading. And my opponent comes on top. Again, very natural. I have these stones. Let's attack them all together. Even though the robot kind of thinks this is a little bit of an overplay. It's like, this, just just come underneath, prevent the base. You can let it run, you know, or, or just continue to attack it. You'll get compensation. You already have a corner. You'll have a really big corner here. Um, you can come back and fix these stones. Uh, and, you know, the game, you can win the game by, you know, three points. <laughs> but my opponent, again, being a human, doesn't do any of that. <laughs> tries to split. And so I play here, which is great. And uh, the robot wants to just come on over the top. This is not the game. And just basically force black to... Uh, wow. Live down here, I guess. Wow. That's pretty crazy. So just completely kill that off, but let black eat the whole corner. Huh. That that's pretty interesting. That is totally not what happens. <laughs> that is so far removed from what's happening. White plays the natural move, right, which is to block here. Um, but alright, you can see this graph climbing. You can kind of see. Okay, wait a second. The as as this group starts to have a much easier and easier prospect of living, uh, white doesn't have enough territory. White white you know needs to get more points in order to win the game. And so here's a move. I, I never take this Atari. And I and the reason why I don't take it is because I might want this peep. Actually, the peep that the game wanted me to play, you know, 50 moves ago. Um, right here, I, I can double peep this and this. And that might be better than having a stone here, right? Um, just having it back here, if white ha especially if white has to connect the same way. But also by not taking this Atari, my opponent kind of um, is, a little, is a little bit too worried, I think. And I'll show you what I mean, because uh, black, I connect here, and I thought black, white should play here. Like, I thought this this is what I read out as the next move. Um, my opponent doesn't play it at all, all right? He, he uh, plays this, this is a Tetsuji. And even though I thought for a while he played really sharp, really nice exchanges, like moves like this, and this, uh, and even this Tanuki, again, at the time I thought was nice, I felt like this move, this this move was not good. Like and I I felt like this in the game. I was like, look, I have some momentum now. Um, this this is a move you play when you need, you want to get this group up and out of of the second line. It's not really an appropriate move in a in a sabaki situation, where black will will happily give something up to give to make uh, more strength somewhere else. And you can see with that one move, we've just thrown the game back to fifty fifty. Like the game is now a toss up. 
Uh, after, so after this move, I, I get a little bit uh, ambitious, and I start asking for a little bit more. I play this move, which might be a little bit unreasonable. Uh, you guys can see how it can crawl around here and link up to this side, or it can bust through and take the corner later. And this is a stone I'm not going to activate right away, but I'm, my thinking is, well, hey, I haven't taken this Atari yet. I still have Aji in the corner. Let's use it for, let's get it going and use it for later. And that way, you know, after I live, my opponent will have to come back here and kill a stone and go to otherwise the corner is gone. And I have no idea if that's good reasoning or not. Um, but, oh man, uh, it, I think it turned out to be a really good move. The robot says right now it's not good because I'm hurting myself a lot when white... In these three, I'm hurting these three stones specifically a lot when white plays here. But, you know, it's still a game. I'm going to take this Hane. Again, there's a, still a defect here, so white crawls. I crawl. And I'm just I'm just starting to get shape and get towards out. And I still have this cut here. I have, I'm still preserving this. Push again. White crawls again. And does robot change... Yeah, robot does change its mind eventually to poking here, which I think is better. Like, I don't think white really has time to crawl again. Uh, because here, uh, I poke, and this is just this is just to make sure the Aji goes the way I want it to. Um, and now I can descend here. And you might be asking yourself, but wait, hey, there is a cut here, and I can just cut you, right? No, there's totally not. After these exchanges, Atari, 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 and white, white is just out of liberties. So that's that's the real meaning of this poke, right? Is it, it's remember how a long time ago how I spent a move getting extra liberty down here where I really shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, this is this is uh, the move to make use of it on this side. Oops. So white connects. I come down again. This white group is now woefully short of liberties, which means that it's like I have a stone here. Um, white can never short himself this liberty. Once once he does, uh, this whole thing dies. And we're gonna see we're gonna see Lizzie actually have a hard time with this. And this is a weird. This seems like a, a weird limitation there, but I don't know why. Um, but it keeps wanting Black to play this move, even though even though it's completely forcing. Well, even though it's let's say it, even though White can never play it, and it's not a good move for White, right? This is a bad exchange if White has to just come back here, um, because this is a you know nice nicer connection than even just playing it directly. You know, this is this is not as nice of a move in most circumstances. Um, anyway, you'll you'll see white keep wanting to play this, and maybe it's because white or black can get another eye in here with two additional moves: black here, then black here, then black here. I guess that's actually that's probably the reason. <laughs> I just figured it out. <laughs> Good for me. Um, all right, so white instead of extending here though, uh, takes this jump. And again, I don't think again you see black. He just wants black to play this move. <laughs> And it's a 20% difference, right? It's like, black should play here. I clap. This is very similar to game, though. Like, this is very similar. So if we, if we, do, the, if we do the computer move, it actually puts uh, white at 44% or so. What happens if we don't play that move? Whoops, here. And we just clamp here in the game. White plays here. Yeah, it actually, if, if white plays there, it even puts black at above 50%. And again, white can never push here. So, yeah, what I thought would ha I thought white would would throw in here, um, but black does have ways of dealing with this, and eventually white will need to either see black can still get out, and these four stones because they're still Atari here really don't want black to be pushing again. Oh man, look at this! If white pops out the eye, there's this cut. Oh, this gets real messy. This gets real messy. Yeah, there's this Hane. I throw in. Has to come back. Wow, black. Oh, man. Yeah, actually, I didn't even see it. This, this, this move is much more forced than I thought because this Atari sets up a short, the, the, the same shortage of liberties on this group uh, as it does on this side. So that's that's pretty far out, actually. All right. Well, anyway, none of this happened in the game. Entirely different game because white doesn't try to poke out my eyes immediately. White just says, "You know what? I just want to stay connected and take the outside." And I think that's pretty reasonable. Again, I just play here. I just play the move. This is just alive. 
It really wants me to play here first and make these exchanges. But I don't know. It doesn't doesn't I still don't really feel like any of that is necessary. <laughs> Again, if I just play here, that just lives. So and now it's actually starting to compute it and be like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay, let's see. White, at this point... Oh, oh that's not what I play? What do I play? No. Oh, we played, sorry, made, um, didn't go back far enough. Here, and then here, okay. Alright, so white is, uh... Still thinks that I should make this exchange. I think it's a good endgame. I just probably miss out in a few endgame points. Okay, but white kind of has a sente here. He, he, he annoys this group a little bit more, um, which is his right, but doesn't threaten the group, right? He can falsify this eye, but black just make two, makes two eyes down here. Uh, and if he just throws in here, of course, then there's a second eye here. So <clears throat> there, isn't, there isn't any way to kill this at this point. All these stones are alive. Uh, however, I should point out, Leela still thinks white should throw in here and make this exchange. Um, it is sent, it's a sente exchange, uh, because if you look at these three black stones, they only have three liberties now, which means they really can't push and cut very effectively anywhere in this neighborhood. So all these white stones are also connected. Even though black got to live, um, white got a lot stronger here. And so that's what Leela thinks should happen. Um, but my opponent, where's my opponent play? Do, do, oh yeah, comes back and finally connects now. So if you remember this move, right, that this one move basically got black to play, or white to play on two sides, right? This one white move was worth two, this one black move was worth two white moves. And so after white comes back and connects, we're back to like a 70% win for black. So wow, look at this. We've just, we've just, we kind of screwed this up. <laughs> um, but we, we were able to uh, keep pressuring white to keep getting responses here just to define the shape on the right hand side of the board a little bit more and then we were able to come back and when we were able to save all these stones and come out of it with sente right because of this move we we're not winning right like we're we're in the lead we are in the driver's seat uh, Lila still wants me to make all these exchanges and then come back here and cut that's the biggest move and I think that would have been good and it's totally not what I did <laughs> Uh, let's go back. Whoops. Up arrow, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow. Okay. So instead, I play here. And Lila's like, no, no, that's, that's not good. But this is a, this, this, look, I have, I have thinness. White, I gave white all this strength on the outside. Uh, I'm actually kind of worried that white can build a large center now, especially after this cut. And so the time to play a defensive move right now feels really good. And maybe, maybe it's just a, a question of math. If I cut here, um, I don't know how this goes at all, but let's assume, let's assume that black can cut here and kill stones, which I don't think is necessarily, it's not a clean kill at all and not even necessarily true. Um, but if I, if I do this, that probably means white's going to be able to invade here, if not, definitely at least here, but probably here, and uh, perhaps kill all these. So is that a fair exchange, getting this corner for all these? Probably not. So, I don't know, my little, my little human brain... I was looking at this move going, look, this is the move that needs to that I need to keep everybody strong over here. Uh, white takes this cut. And this cut's good, although the robot and I are very much in disagreement with how to deal with it. Because <laughs> the robot just wants me to whoops, uh, push through here like this. And it still wants me to do that, but wants me to keep playing over here. And white will now try to do something over here. Um, I... This is effectively Gote, right? If you if you guys are looking at this, although actually, you know what? This is better for me than what happened in the game. If I do, if I do, actually, if I do, I didn't see this jump, right? I did, I did. If I do Atari, then jump. That is a that is a good sequence. Uh, all right, all right. See, the thing is, I felt like because I reviewed the game, or I actually went through this game a lot yesterday. And I got sort of like all my sads out then, like all the moves I didn't play. And so I was like, yeah, all right, today we'll make a video, even though I didn't save all my data uh, for my analysis. Let's let's just make a video, and I'll be I'll be in a better. It'll be a good video, right? I'll be happy, and I'll be I'll be happy to explain things, and I won't just sit there depressed the whole time. And then 
Yeah, this combination though. I didn't see this yesterday. And that would have been nice. Oh man. And actually the variation I thought it, I think it read out yesterday was this. It wanted me to keep pushing. Which this kind of made me sad. Like this didn't, this, this did not feel right. Giving white all this extra strength. Um, made me feel like the version I played in game was superior. Because in the game, I just connect here. Like I'm just like, okay, I'm done with Aji. If you want to extend here, you have to do it in Gote. And white does. White's like, that's, you know what, that's big enough to extend in Gote. And I do play this jump. Right? And so the difference is, I'm really only moving this stone from here to here. But, uh, the thing is, this stone should be here. This stone is be now much stronger against these two stones. Um, and I'm actually way too over-concentrated. And so it's just like one of those very, it's very subtle, right? Just moving this stone from here to here. But I think you can already see how that's better, you know, for black just to have a stronger wall across. And I was just too worried about this, this and this uh, stone's Aji. Yeah. Yeah, this would have been, this would have, this would have been a very different game, I think. Uh, because if I had played here, I'm going to play the right-hand side differently in the next couple moves, because I basically lose my shit. And here we go. Let's... This is the game. Let me, let me, let me drink, let me, let me, let me, let me mourn my, my shape a little bit. <laughs> mm. Let me come, come to terms with this lesson. Yeah, because in the game, my reasoning is perfect, right? Like, I'm like, look, if I can play here, and white's going to play here, and it's sort of like I gave this move for, to white for free. White already wants to play this move. And I still have a shape problem, right? So I have to keep pushing. And I'm just pushing from behind, and white's super happy about it. Because now, all of a sudden, now this white turns into a 20-point center. So again, my reasoning was, don't play that, just play here. If white wants to play here, now all of a sudden, I have Sente to destroy the center or, or fix myself. So that reasoning is great. But it's not great... Because I'm just going to want to play here again anyway. Like, this is a nice point to to divide. Okay. Very, very subtle shape lesson. That makes me kind of sad. All right. Anyway, I play here. And white uh, comes back to fix this cut. And I think that's good. Like, I don't, like, Lila doesn't think much of it. Right? 23%. Yeah, Lila would prefer to fix it this way, which is fine. But the idea is the same. The idea is the same. Uh, wants a robot. Play some end game over here. Next best move. It's looking like... Yeah, play over here. And this would be a nice move in this case because black has enough to win the game. And it's not by a lot. Right? But if, if this goes like this, um, white can't quite build enough here in the center, even though it looks, it looks like it gets really big really fast. You know, with these two stones and these two stones, white can't quite build enough. Um, and so white, white has to try things down here. Yeah. Um, I saw the game as being too close. <laughs> and really didn't want... Really saw the center as the biggest area. And so after black... Or sorry, after white fixes this, I push here again. And I'm like, look, I'm just going to destroy this. And part of my reasoning was... Well, hey, also not only not only does this help destroy the center, right? It 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 makes use of this stone, right? It shorts liberties on these two stones, and later on, I might be able to attack these four stones, right? Like I might even be able to capture them. Wouldn't that be great? So this totally felt like the right direction. I was really happy to play this move. However, my opponent played this, and then I freaked out, and I was like, "Oh crap! Did I just die?" And again, my at this point, so my clock is also getting a little bit short. So I'm I'm approaching Bioyomi. And uh, I, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm, this is okay. Uh, system attachment, we can deal with this. We can just live here. But I was like, no, I don't want to just live here. I really want to connect. And so I'm sitting here, and I'm, I'm basically using the rest of my time down to Bioyomi. And I, I'm like, okay, I have it. I have a sequence that will let me connect. But the sequence is a terrible misread. Like... Like, is it just a completely botched misread? Like, doesn't work. Uh, and, here, let me show you. This is, and, and so after, so I'm sitting here for a few minutes, I'm like, okay, I have the whole thing read out. Nothing bad can happen. Let's just connect. I've gotten this move's profit. We're on our way to winning the game. Let's go. 
And so these moves we, we both play very quickly, because apparently he was reading the same thing. And uh, this is just pure hallucination on my part, because again, I read this out, this all happened very quickly, and I was like, yeah, I just win this capturing race. No, I don't win the capturing race. It's three to three, but it's white's move. And so uh, let me draw your attention to exhibit A over here on the left, ladies and gentlemen, of how I managed to go from here all the way back down here, which is far lower, I mean, not far lower, but lower than any other point I've been this game, even after I botched this whole opening left-hand corner. I will all allow you to take a sip of your tea in, in mourning for our glorious comrades. And so now I'm sitting here, right? And I'm, I'm basically in, in Byoyomi and going, uh, do I resign? Do I resign? Do I resign? I think I resign. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I resign. And so then I keep, you know, I, I'm, I'm counting the game as fast as I can. And I'm like, well, you know, it's, it doesn't, everything isn't quite settled yet. Like right now, white has enough points, but you know, maybe there's a way to use this Aji. I don't know. I'm not ready. To, I'm not emotionally ready to resign. Let's say, let's say like, like clearly in terms of points, I'm ready to resign. Emotionally, I'm not. So I'm like, let's play a little bit more. Uh, and so I just take the biggest move I can find, which is here. So robot agree. Robot thinks this is biggest. Um, and I, I would tend to agree, although this doesn't really kill these stones cleanly. Like, well, I can still sort of weasel out them with at least a co. Um, so I'm just, again, I'm just like, ah, let's just play the biggest move and, and go on. Because again, if I get, if I get the whole bottom, which I shouldn't be entitled to, but if I do, uh, this is still close to 40 points. And so if I have 40 points here and 10 points here and maybe 20 points here, if I'm lucky, 70 points is still like, but really enough to win the game if white doesn't build this. So, you know, in my head, that's sort of how I'm justifying it in terms of points. White comes back to, to take this honey. This is very big. Uh, again, builds a center, helps this group. And uh, I just hane. And at this point, yes, white should play a move over here, something that, that just saves these stones. Uh, white plays this double hane. And this move is pretty bad. <laughs> and Lila agrees. Lila's still figuring out actually how bad it is. Uh, because now, all of a sudden, these four stones are in a lot more danger. Like, a lot more danger. And so I just play here now. And White still not... White still hasn't lost the game, right? White can play this type of sequence and find a co here. I think it should be co. Let me make... Let me... See. Yes, there is this co. Right? Right here. So White, White can still, you know, basically get a very large center and capture three stones and link up to his stones with this co. But this co... Oh man, actually it really thinks even this co isn't that good. It thinks uh, it's really basically a 50-50 game. Um, but anyway, my opponent doesn't read any of this out. Or I don't, I don't know if he does. I'm just mis I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. Um, oops, no, no, no. Here, go back to here at this point. Um, because he takes this Atari. Or sorry, maybe I don't read it out because I play here. <laughs> um, I just connect... And then instead of pushing through, yeah, which is what he should do. Oh man, look at this. This graph's hard to read because it looks like the line's up there, but it's actually down here. Um, he just push through and connect, right? This, this, this black has no business taking this connection. Um, black should just really just play here and fight this co for this entire uh, quarter of the board. Um, whoops, so forward. Forward, yeah. Instead of pushing through, he just connects. He's worried about this cut, which is nothing. This cut is not is not important. If he plays here, like he's worried if black comes here. Um, I don't even think actually it says white should fix. Although that seems kind of dangerous. I'm not sure about this. Okay, maybe maybe black just breaks through here. But as long as white links up, this is still a one game for white, like totally one game for white. Uh but he doesn't. That's amazing, right? He plays here, and he's worried about this cut. This cut is way too small. And so I get to play here. And so the graph goes from 80% black, or sorry, 80% white, all the way to 80% black, right? Because now there's no way to save these four stones. This is all just black territory. 
And so it's like, good, I didn't resign. <laughs> you know, we're just like, oh my God, I didn't resign and it worked. Or, by the way, that's that's a that's a something we're going to see later on in the tournament as well. Uh, we're going to see me uh, almost resign a game, <laughs> um, although the the two games end differently. Uh, spoiler, spoiler alert! In games I should have resigned. Okay, now at this point, like I'm just I'm just high on some sort of brain chemical. Like I'm just like, oh my god, I'm like somehow still in this game. Uh, but again, I, my count isn't very accurate. I'm sort of short of time, and I'm going. Look, this is still really big. If white gets this, and this, and this, and this, I'm sure I don't have enough points to win. But I was lying to myself. Or I was just being that dumb. Because if white gets this, and black gets all this, yes, this is in fact enough points for black to win. If black gets all this, and black gets all this, it's black who wins. You know, just by a little bit, but it's big enough. And just look at that win percentage, just crawl even higher, right, if I just block. But again, base again, I, I was still convinced I'm behind. Because because even though this is a huge territory, it's really only one territory. And white, I'm looking at white has three substantial chunks and potential in the center. Plus, I was also convinced I need to use this Aji somehow. If I don't get if I don't use this Aji from this deck group, there's no way I'm gonna win this game. And so I play the most creative move I can find, which is here. And you can see Lila just like going, oh, I don't know what that's about. Like, I don't know. Again, I'm just trying to short, find a shortage of liberties here on these two stones, or these three stones, so I can get in here, break up this group, maybe counterattack the stone, or find time to link up. This move's trying to do a lot. And it's trying to do too much. But, uh, again, white white now needs to break up black. White, white after this move, if white's not going to get all these points, um, white wins this game by applying pressure. And I play this fancy-looking move. And this move really kind of freaked out my opponent. Even though, look, it's a terrible move, right? It's a game-losing move. All I, all I really need to do is just play here, right? And my point, that's, that's enough Aji, right? Once I do this, I can then come back and play another move. I don't know, something... Game seems to like this one. Just come back here, live, make a few points. White can't seal both this area and this area at the same time. Uh, black is fine. Black wins the game by a few. But I play this move, which looks good so cool it's like look i'm getting your, in your base i have this stone here helping the connection i'm attacking your two stones how cool of a move is that like i'll toast that that move turns out it's not that good <laughs> uh, <laughs> wants white to make a couple exchanges over here and then come back here and just bust through this move right and just and just bust it although i'm not sure why it's still making exchanges just keep descending. Um, these four black stones are in pretty serious trouble. They have to keep responding. So white has more Aji to work with. Oh man, that's it. That's now it wants to come back here. I don't. I don't understand you, robot. All right, you are. You are being insane. I'm taking you away from here. Here, let's go back to here. Um, but anyway, we're, play we're playing a game with humans, and this this kind of freaks out my opponent. And But he finds this move, right? And this is now serious, because now he's threatening to uh, attack this very directly. This move helps him get out, helps uh, Hane here make eye space, or even poke the base of this group. Does a lot of things. Shouldn't matter, I should still just play here, and still just cruise to a, to a nice small victory. I don't play that. I play here. And again, I'm still like in crazy mode. Like, let's let's attack these three stones. I know it's surrounded by just an infinite wall of white, and white has many, many friends to run to. Doesn't matter. I'm going to attack you. I'm going to come back and I'm going to destroy all these points while attacking. Then I'm going to come back here and live, and it's going to be great. And my opponent is like, okay, your plan, your plan is pretty reasonable. I, I, your plan, I got to say, seems like it makes sense. And so just look at this graph. Just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, because in reality, what White should do is just bust through here and, and threaten this stone. And I'm like, okay, here, let's keep it going, right? I'm just going to keep attacking you, and I'm going to make shape and make a base, and we're going to destroy while doing it. And White's like, okay, you know what? You're right. You're right. You can attack me. I'm just going to go back to my friends. Just leave me alone. And I'm like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Let's keep, let's keep attacking you. <laughs> and at this point... White's like, you know, there's maybe other ways to deal with this. Maybe, maybe I can poke some shape over here. 
And so White now finally takes the double sente move. And if you just look at this graph, right, this is the story of, of a double sente move. This is what happens when neither player takes the double sente move, right? The game is just flipping on its head back and forth. Like, who is going to be able to connect in sente? Uh, now, in the game, White plays this passive move. White should play a little bit more strongly here to, to force a disconnection. Um, but I'll show you the sequence. He, he's Again, he's just trying to stay strong. Like he's, he's playing like he's won the game, right? He's just trying to keep everything strong and not uh, let anything die. And... Um, or maybe maybe he's not playing so much to uh, that he thinks he's ahead, but he's trying to play in such a way that he can preserve a, a, a killing um, sequence on this group. One of those two things are correct. So I play here. There's not really a good shape move. All these shapes suck for black. Black, because black didn't play this move. Um, it's amazing. Like, this cut is actually not terrible, but uh, I never played the move that made it okay. <laughs> right? So... I have to come back and fix the shape one more time. Um, now, granted, white shouldn't have played here, right? This move was very weak for white. Um, white did not need it to keep these separated. Um, but again, it made white, it's one of those moves that make whites feel better. If white's out, white can't get hurt. Uh, white is the only one who can do damage. Um, but things are looking really dire now for this black group because I needed to come back and connect. So certainly white comes back and plays a killing move. And, uh, you know, here's a, here's just a, you know, we were like, it's like, so, so even before I play this move, I'm, I'm like spending Biyomi's trying to, trying to read this out as far as I can. And I'm like, you know, I think I have a living sequence. And so we play it out. He plays this one. These are, this is a major fork in the road. White can play here or here. Both of them are interesting. Both of them have, uh, are different life and death problems, essentially. He chooses this one, which I thought was the easier one for me. And because I, I thought at this point, I am alive. I have two eyes. And if you are looking at the board, you can already see, uh, maybe you can't already see, if you're a really strong player, you can already see that black does not have two eyes. Because uh, you can certainly see, at least Leela doing your homework for you, and saying Leela should play here. But I read this out, right, when I was, when I was going back to this you know, um, moment before the, the white dive in. And... Uh, I was like, you know what? I still have two eyes, right? Like, there's there's two eyes here. There's no problem, right? Do you see the two eyes? Isn't it glorious? But no, the move I missed in my reading is this extension here. And this is the killing move. My opponent doesn't see it either. Neither of us see the, the, the wedge and the extend after the Atari to kill the group. Again, if you want to see that again, Atari, extend. And if black connects here, white can actually run this out. And black has no chance of living. If black, um, oops, sorry. If black uh, Atari is here, this makes this other throw and makes this eye false. And again, black has no way to make a second eye here. And so after the game, we looked at this and, and we, we re revisited the sequence when we found this move and my opponent was a little distraught at it, but um, not too distraught. <laughs> uh, so anyway, neither of us find this move. Um, so he plays over here, and he takes these exchanges, which are good exchanges. And you can again see the graph sort of bouncing up and down. Um, and uh, so, th so again, so here, I actually, this is the end of the game record. I'll, I'll, I basically just have to tell you what happens after this point, since I didn't I was in. I was too far from me to be recording moves on my uh, on my iPad. Uh, what Black does end up living in here. It's not pretty life, but it ends up all alive. Um, Black even ends up basically getting both of these in these groups into here. White only ends up getting you know like these six points. Um, White does find like another five points or so in this neighborhood though. Um, but I'm I'm still short on time, and I play a pretty terrible end game. Uh, the fi I think the final score of this game was black is ahead about three points on the board, which of course means black loses by four and a half after Comey. And so this ends up being a loss for me, right? Despite, uh, <clears throat> you know, several points in the game of these wild swings, and even in the end, still having a chance, right? If this group is going to live, uh, there's still a chance for black to play a better endgame and make up those four points. So day one, the US Go Congress, this was a loss. This was, uh, you know, again, like I said, Soren went on to place third in the band, so 
you know, he was certainly a strong player, and I very much enjoyed the game with him. Uh, I, uh, I, again, I was really impressed with with several of his moves, uh, especially in the middle game, just finding some really nice exchanges to make. Uh, he handled this really well. Uh, you know, if you guys are watching the Lila moves, you know, well, on one hand, you could say, look at all the moves we didn't play that, that the robot really liked. I felt like in this game, there were a lot of moves that, that we did play that the robot really liked, or were certainly at least, you know, top two candidates um, kind of thing. So I'm still, I'm still pretty happy with the game at this point. I've sort of made my piece with it. Let's say I got all my, my vented frustrations out yesterday um, when I was doing another series of review. Uh, then, um, but yeah, day one, and again, part of my part of my feeling for the going to the US Open was I'm going to make these these micro Chinese or four space extension moves. Um, I'm really just going to try out this sort of new mindset of avoiding some of these more conventional or traditional uh, spacings of stones, and it didn't work in this game, but that's okay. So, ha, huh, yeah, this is a. Uh, this is my game. Did we learn anything? Should we should we try to recap like something concrete to learn? I learned a lot. Um, no, we learned nothing. We really learned nothing. There's nothing. Uh, maybe maybe for those people out there who've never seen this sequence before, um, if you're going to attack over here, um, you should you should know about this type of. Exchange. This is very powerful, again, especially used against Q players or weaker players, um, especially in handicap games, um, where you know Black already has the corner and extends, and White needs the White player needs to get a whole bunch of stuff for free on the outside. Um, this is a nice way to do it. And your opponent, again, in a handicap game, will often screw this up too, because this is a hard sequence. Um, it does help to have the ladder though, which you often don't have in a handicap game. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you don't have the ladder, uh, whoops, and you make this cut. Nope. Oh, wow. Here, uh, you know, even though I, I guess this is still kind of, kind of good. Is it good? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, let's let's say the ladder. The ladder makes some things easier for white, or for well, for in the handicap game, it would be the black player. So yeah, this is just a nice sequence if you've never seen it before. Again, I don't think the robots are playing it. Um, this is not something I've really seen the robots do this attachment, um, but. It is a very, very human move and has been used for, you know, hundreds of years now um, at this point. So, yeah. Uh, I, I think I've done talking about this game. So, it was great, it was great, you know, uh, just, just it was, it, when after I played this game, I, you know, even though I lost and I felt sad, I was still just happy being at the Go Congress and uh, reuniting with a lot of friends, meeting all you people, and again, all of you guys who came up to me. Uh, during the Go Congress and introduce yourself, you know, thank you so much. You know, you guys really make my Go Congress in that way. Um, and uh, I'll do another video very soon. Um, and uh, we'll look at game two, uh, which is against an opponent who I've played with several times in the past, actually. Like, it's it's uh, one of the people I seem to get matched up with once every, you know, two years or so. So anyway, look forward to that and uh, happy going. <laughs>